Welcome to this video. Great to have you back in this series. You'll learn a lot about Bootstrap 4 in the other videos. In this video, I will show you how you can customize it to your needs. We'll use SAS for this, a superset to CSS, which allows us to change some default settings for Bootstrap, like the border radius, as you can see here, or the primary color, all set conveniently with SAS variables, and thereafter we import and overwrite what we need from the Bootstrap package. Sounds complicated? It actually isn't. So let's dive into that and let's see how that works. So let's dive right into customizing this. And for this, we'll start on the official Bootstrap documentation page, getbootstrap.com. There, if you click on documentation, you can click on theming. Here on the main page, theming. Here you find instructions on how you may adjust the theme or the general look of Bootstrap, so to say. Because Bootstrap 4 uses SAS behind the scenes. Now, SAS, in case you don't know, is basically like a super set to CSS. It's a language building up on CSS, which offers you some extra features. And I'll dive into SAS in just a second. And Bootstrap 4 or the team behind it used SAS because it basically makes writing styles easier. Everything is compiled to normal CSS code before it's getting shipped though. So normal CSS code is running in the browser and normal CSS code is what we're importing here with that Bootstrap um, link here. However, behind the scenes it uses SAS during the build process and this is exactly where we need to hook in. If we want to adjust the colors, let's say, or the default sizes, margins and so on assumed by Bootstrap, then we have to override some defaults which are set up in that SAS code and basically recompile the Bootstrap package to CSS again. This is what we'll do and this is what you find instructions on on this page. So here you basically find an example structure, how this might look like in your project, how you can override the SAS code or using SCSS, which is a variant of SAS, so to say. And this is exactly what we will do. Now, one thing you can already see here is that it kind of needs Bootstrap locally to do that. We need to get the raw source code behind Bootstrap, the SAS code. And we can easily get that by installing it as a local dependency using NPM. NPM is Node's package manager, and you get it automatically when installing Node.js. Uh, we're not going to write any Node.js code, but it ships with that package manager, which is the de facto standard tool for managing development dependencies. Now, I already got that installed, and with that, you can go back into your project, open your terminal or command line, either the normal one or like I did here, the one integrated into your IDE, and navigate into that project folder in that terminal. Now you can run npm init using that node package manager tool, which will basically put this project under control of npm. You're then asked a couple of questions, you have to assign a project name and so on, and you can basically always accept the default. Of course, you can also fine tune it to your needs. And once you did all that and confirmed, you should see that there is a package.json file in your project now. This basically is used by NPM to control, well, your project and which dependencies you have. Now with that added, you can now run another command, npm install to install a new dependency, and that dependency is bootstrap. So enter bootstrap here, and I'll add dash dash save to also store an entry in the package.json file. This basically makes sharing the project easier thereafter. It will now also give you that package log.json file, which stores the exact version which was installed. And in package.json, you also see that Bootstrap was added as a dependency. Now with that, we got it locally and we also get this node modules folder here now. Now in that folder, you should see that Bootstrap folder. And in that Bootstrap folder, you have the dist folder with the finished and, and readily compiled Bootstrap code but you also got the SCSS folder and this holds all the raw code. Now you could of course go into such a file here and start editing stuff there. Don't do that. 
It wouldn't get compiled. That's the first problem you'll run into. Just because you added it here, it won't affect the compiled and finished CSS code. And additionally, you shouldn't touch this because if you ever need to reinstall your project and reinstall that dependency, well, you'll overwrite your changes. So we'll follow a different approach. We'll create our own main.scss file, a file where we will write our own CSS code and also overwrite the bootstrap defaults. Now, in order to be able to write SAS code or SCSS code, we need a SAS compiler. And in many projects, you'll have Webpack with SAS loader in there. We could do that here too, but we don't really need Webpack. So what I'll do is, I'll just go to sas-lang.com and there if you click on documentation, you can learn more about SAS and especially you can also learn how to install it. Under using SAS, you find installation steps. For Windows, you need to install Ruby first. For Mac and Linux, you already got that. We're not going to write any Ruby code, but it, it, it uses the Ruby package manager basically to install SAS. So you should just run this gem install SAS command with Ruby installed to install SAS on your machine. And once you got that, you can run it as a tool from your command line to compile SAS or SCSS files to normal CSS files. Now, this is not a SAS course or video. So if you want to learn more about that, definitely check out tutorials dedicated to SAS. What I want to do here is I just want to use it to, well, overwrite my bootstrap defaults. And for that, we can go back to the bootstrap documentation. And there you see that one easy way of overwriting bootstrap is by importing everything from that bootstrap folder. The alternative is that we only import what we need, but for that you need to make sure that you really import everything you do use in your page thereafter. So I will go with the import everything approach, basically what we already do. And then you add this import in your main.scss file. With this, you can now from the terminal in your project folder run sas main.scss main.css and this will override the main.css file. So let me quickly also grab the styles we have set up there. Let me add them after this import. And now hit enter. And this now gives you your main.css file, which is way bigger now because now it includes the entire bootstrap package. It's also not minified. So that would be something you have to do with some uh, extra build step. We won't do it here. I want to focus on just the customization part. The key thing is that now we got all the bootstrap styles in that main.css file. Of course, again, we could edit them there, but we shouldn't do that. Instead, let's just import this main.css file. So I will go to my index.html file, get rid of that bootstrap import here from the CDM. We don't need that anymore because we got everything in main.css. This also means that if we save all the files and we go back to our project and if I reload, it should look exactly as it did before. Because even though we're not importing Bootstrap from a CDN anymore, we still get the entire Bootstrap code imported because it's now all in our main.css file. We can check this in our browser developer tools in the head section. We only got that import to main.css. And if we click on sources there, we can see that main.css indeed has all these Bootstrap uh, data fields. Now, for one, we can also see that Bootstrap seems to use CSS variables here. However, we will override the SAS variables. And we do that in our main.scss file where we import Bootstrap. There, we now have to make sure that we override any colors or whatever we want to change Bootstrap uses. So again, back in the official docs, we find more information on that. We find how we can set some default colors. We have to do that before we import Bootstrap because we want to declare our own styles before we import the Bootstrap styles. Bootstrap's variables uh, in the SAS code are actually configured in a way that they won't override our values if we set them. But if we don't set them, then the Bootstrap defaults will be used. And this is how we can set colors for theme colors. We also got that theme colors map. And why don't we just give it a try? So let's copy that theme colors map. It's basically a bit like a JavaScript object, you could say. And let's import it or add it in front of that Bootstrap import. Now there, let's set primary maybe to a purple and danger to maybe a different red simply, like a dark red. 
And now keep in mind, primary is a color we are using in our project for that submit button here, button primary. Right now, if we have a look at our project, it looks like this, it's blue. Now we override this here with theme colors primary. So now what we can do is we can re-execute that SAS compilation command. And once this finishes, we should be able to reload our page. And now you see it's purple. And the hover effect is automatically adjusted too. Because Bootstrap behind the scenes uses this variable in a couple of places to set up a hover style and a default style for the button and also for the button outline, for the alert which we could have given a primary style too as you saw in an earlier video in the series. So wherever we can use that primary color, it's now going to be purple. And of course you cannot just change the primary color. Indeed, you can find out what you can change by going to the Bootstrap SCSS folder and in there, you have this variables.scss file, underscore variables. In there, you actually see all the variables Bootstrap uses and they all have this default flag so that your changes actually aren't overwritten by them. They're only used if you don't set them, so if they should be used as a default. And there you see all the colors you can override. You can in general override what is blue in Bootstrap world or as we did it, you can go to that colors map and in there, you can also override some uh, colors, excuse me, theme colors was it. There you can override primary and so on. You cannot just override colors, you can also override the, um, the, the dimensions or the sizes Bootstrap uses. If you scroll through the file, you'll see a lot of things used by Bootstrap like the breakpoints and so on or what a default border radius is. And you can change all of that, not in this file, but in your file. You simply grab that border radius here, for example, add it in front of the import, that's always important, and then change it from the default, which is .25 rem, change it to, let's say, 10 rem. If you now save this and recompile your code, that's always important, recompile the CSS code. If you now reload, you see the inputs are way more rounded because we overwrote this default border radius. And that is really something I encourage you to play around with. There's a lot you can do with that. Now coming back to something else we saw in the docs, that part that you only import what you need. This is actually good because it allows you to shrink the size of CSS code your users have to download. Right now we use that approach where your users download everything. Everything all the times. Now if you know you only use the grid and you only use form inputs and buttons, then you can actually just import these parts of Bootstrap. Because if you have a look at the Bootstrap SCSS folder, you see it's actually split up into buttons, into forms, and into grid, for example. So let's do that. Let's import what we need. We got three required imports, which we always need. You can see them here in the docs. So let's grab these and insert them here. These are the default functions, variables and mixins used by Bootstrap. You can override that stuff, but you probably don't override everything. So make sure that you have the defaults for the parts you don't override and you do import these defaults by adding these imports. And now let's import the other parts which we need. Like for example, the grid. This is how that import would look like. But then we in our case also need the buttons and we need the forms. And as a side note, you might notice that we omit that underscore, which is part of the file name. This is simply automatically added by SAS, so to say, so you have the import without the underscore. Now with that all added, we can recompile again. Now it's also faster if you saw that. And in our main.css file, it's leaner now. It still has a lot of code in there, but actually it only has the grid related code, the forms and the button related code. If you, for example, search for alert in there, you won't find any alert classes because we didn't include alerts. This also has one other implication. If we now reload our page, there's one thing that should be broken right now, the navigation bar. So let's reload. And indeed, form looks good, button looks good, but the default styles like the text, that's broken, and the navigation bar, as mentioned, is broken. Now the reason for this, of course, is that we didn't include the navigation bar here. The nav bar, we didn't include that. So let's go back. Let's also include the nav bar. And regarding the default 
uh, styles or the default text style, that actually is the reboot package, which sets some default styles for the browser. With that, we can recompile everything, reload, and the text is fixed. The nav bar is kind of fixed, I'd say. Now, the reason for the invisible nav bar is that we also need to include utilities here because we're using some utility features in the nav bar. With that, if we go back, here it is again. Our responsive nature is only kind of working though. For example, like right here, you see this is not really working as it should. For that, we need to include the transition so that we can play this animation to expand or uh, well, remove our mobile nav bar. With that, if we recompile and then reload, we can already see it. Now this is working here, and now we go back to the state where we were before. Now, as you see, it can be tricky to import everything you need. I also had to look up, for example, the transition thing or the utilities. It's easy to overlook this if you think you just need the nav bar. And one other important thing, you can always look into these files, of course. You can look in there, for example, the type package. We're not importing this, but here we also seem to set some typography related things. So we might also want to import that after reboot maybe. So reboot sets some um, browser defaults in general, but the type package here then sets some general typography related settings for bootstrap. So that is also something we might want to import even though I don't see a direct difference here. But you can always look into these files you can find out which variables the different features there use, and you can look into the variables files in general as explained, and then you can always override the things thereafter, import what you need on your project, and therefore improve your bundle, your file size, and tweak it to your needs. So this is how you can customize Bootstrap 4 or projects using Bootstrap 4. Again, this could also be implemented into a Webpack workflow where you just um, compile your SAS file differently in the end. I hope this was helpful and that with all these videos, you now understand how you can actually work with Bootstrap and add it to your next project.